How you doing guys, Zara here. So today I wanted to talk about Bloodborne. As all of you know, Bloodborne was released in 2015, exclusively on the PlayStation 4, coming off the heels from the Dark Souls 2. Obviously, immediately fans were hooked by the game's aesthetic, fluid combat and interesting mechanics. Now, it's hard not to talk about Dark Souls when you're discussing about that Bloodborne, right? Since there's so much of its DNA, it's rooted into the, in the Souls series. But really, they are vastly quite different, especially in the settings. Now, the first thing you are guys already might have noticed is regarding the beautiful and uh, gothic design and the setting. With the, uh, with the Victorian looking architecture and an almost Lovecraft taken on the enemy's design. The city of the Yarnum is the character itself and truly makes this game special. It really is an, a unique aesthetic that helps it stand out among the many action games, of course that we've seen from the past decade. Despite that, in Bloodborne 2, it will be disappointing for, the two, for us to stay in Yarnum, simply because many players know that the city inside and out. From software typically changes the setting with each of its games, so this shouldn't really be a major concern. However, the Souls games do all tend to blend together since they're all so similar. Uh, that's why Bloodborne is memorable. After years of sticking with a fantasy setting, we finally got something different. It would be a shame if Bloodborne 2 stuck with the same setting as the original. Now, with the sequel, maybe a different time uh, period could really work. Almost like how the Assassin's Creed gives us a new historical setting, almost, uh, almost like every entry. Because of how weird Bloodborne gets, especially towards the end, it really could do anything. There are giant Cthulhu-like monsters and even alien-looking creatures at one point, so there's a lot of room of the exploration in the new entry. Now, I'm not saying we need to uh, have like octopus monsters in space, but it needs to be different enough to stand out. Maybe even take places in the areas that resemble ancient Japan could really work. You know what I mean, Sekiro style. Ultimately though, the team at the From Software knows what they're doing, and I trust them with whatever the Bloodborne does will end up looking like. Don't expect in your face narrative when playing Bloodborne. The lore is hidden deep within the item descriptions, environmental storytelling, and the conversations with the NPCs you find throughout the world. This gives em emphasis to the game I play, which is real star of the show. This isn't to say that the story should be dismissed, in fact, it's quite interesting. But uh, the main draw is in the mastering the game's exceptional combat system. When looking ahead, it's hard to pinpoint what a sequel could include, uh, since like the combat is already so damn good. One thing that wouldn't really hurt, right, is the inclusion of more of a diverse weapons. Sure, there are weapons in Bloodborne do all have their own unique qualities, but seeing some uh, wild off the wall weapons could spice things up a little bit. In the old uh, hunters. The DLC expansion includes a few more weapons to choose from, which is most definitely a step in the correct direction. So, for Bloodborne 2, could double down on that idea. This might be a coincidence with a new setting at the time period would dictate which weapons you'd have at your disposal, but I want more of the reason to try every weapon. It's far too easy to just stick with the, whichever weapon does highest damage while ignoring the rest. So Bloodborne 2 should give us an incentivization to experiment with everything available and maybe having some more interesting weapons to choose from could really help. Oh, the weapon transformation mechanic wherein each weapon has two attack modes has simply was a fantastic inclusion. Bloodborne 2 should ext extrapolate on this, like giving us even more options for the unique weapons. Now it's tough because despite how great Bloodborne is, it's hard to recommend to absolutely everybody. When thinking about the sequel from software, it might be at the odds with that to do, in terms of the accessibility. On one hand, the design is meant to test your skill, make you overcome a challenge, and reward you for doing so. Any drastic changes to this formula could negatively impact and the upcoming game. From a creative standpoint, I feel for the developers who are tasked with solving this issue. As a creator, you probably want everyone to be able to experience your game, so creating something so difficult will, by default, alienate most players. Should Bloodborne 2 change things up and be designed in such a way that will allow more players to experience it? Maybe? 
Uh, a few simple mechanics in Bloodborne give it its, its own identity, like a health recovery system, the lack of shields, and the ability to parry from the distance. A new creative uh, solution, like the ones I've just mentioned, could help take Bloodborne 2 to a new direction, allowing p more players to hop in. It needs to be balanced in such a way that won't ruin the game for the experienced players either, while still letting newcomers join in. Changing too much might cause it to lose uh, what makes the original so damn great. One of the most controversial aspects is how difficult the game is right from the start. Seriously, most players drop off when the first 10 minutes of the game. Once they get into villagers surrounding the fire. Now, many fans believe uh, this is important because it prepares you. Others think it's too, ha uh, too hard right off the bat and should ease you in more, with a gradual increase in the difficulty. I'm torn on this personally because I can see both the points. So it's up to the wizards from the uh, from software to tackle this issue. At the end of the day, uh, the hardcore Bloodborne fans might be against this notion, but I think allowing for more players to enjoy the sequel could be a positive thing. Now, despite its the exceptional quality, Bloodborne, well, it's not perfect. There are many ways a sequel could improve the formula. One of the biggest issues this is how uh, it's a tad clunky to navigate throughout the world. I don't mean just walking around, but fast traveling between the areas. In Bloodborne, you must go back to the hunter's dream every time you want to warp to a new area. It might be a more uh, streamlined if you could simply fast travel between the lamps, which is much more like a Souls game. Along with that, the loading screens are still noticeably damn long. They were vastly improved after the games was released, but since you have to travel to two places to get where you want to go, the loading times tend to add up. A lot has changed since Bloodborne released, and it's some of them might feel outdated if it were released today. Additionally, the Chalice Dungeons were such a neat idea, and I would love to see something like that in a sequel. Admittedly, this mode wasn't a fully fledged out as it could have been. It was an awesome starting point for something that could have been very cool. If you asked around, many players either completely ignored this mode or weren't too wild about it. And I'm one of them. So Bloodborne 2 could make it more worth your while to play, just so you know. Aside from that, there are some technical issues that should be addressed, like the frame rate, which will no doubt be fixed in the sequel. If Bloodborne 2 is a PlayStation 5 game, it might be realistic to have it uh, running at 60fps instead of the 30fps in the original. Most notably though, the online aspects need some work. While I have fond memories of playing, many memories involve me just waiting for a friend to join my game or for a specific person to invade. Sure, it's gotten a lot better with the updates, but Bloodborne 2 could streamline this and make it easier to play with others, and pass to load in. Here's another tough one. Will we actually get a sequel? At first, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Sure, we could. We could. But if more discussions happen as we get to further away from the original, maybe Bloodborne 2 isn't even in the cards. To be clear, I still think it'll happen, but from the development standpoint, it must be very challenging to come up with what to do for the sequel. From Software doesn't release bad games, so then it needs to be up to their standards before they're considered release, uh, releasing something, right? Maybe it's in the development and from software is working tirelessly on making sure it captures of the captures essen the uh, essences of the original, while including enough new features to feel fresh. Or maybe the team doesn't want to tarnish the Bloodborne name and have to move on from the idea completely. From software would leave, uh, from software would be leaving uh, money on the table if a sequel was skipped. But who knows what's really going on over there? Miyazaki mentioned that he's not even up to them to make the decision of making the sequel. Since this is a property of Sony, they are the ones that are calling the shots and saying if they would like to have a sequel. And again, since they're already in the development with the Elden Ring, this only means that we are much further away from the sequel to happen, unfortunately. But still, at the end of the day, Bloodborne is one, one of the most iconic PlayStation franchises uh, uh, this far. It's spooky, has some satisfying and an absolutely fluid combat, there's a dark and a memorable aesthetic with the interesting themes that make it a nearly perfect video game. A sequel needs to do all of that about all much better, which is probably not an easy task. Now, of course, what would you like to see in a Bloodborne sequel, or Bloodborne 2, or whatever you like to mention it or name it? Well, at that, thank you so much for watching, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys all later, and have a good one.